Y'all, I'm so glad my husband does not listen to our podcast. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> You're listening to the Creative Faith and Friends Podcast, episode number 10. Oh, I got you. There's no reason to. Chasing payment on my own. Because you're here to stay every night and day. I'm delighted because I got you. La, 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 well, welcome to Creative Faith and Friends Podcast. My name is Melissa Olson from PinkPaperPeppermints.com. And today I'm with my two co hosts, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hello. And Jessica. Hi, Jess. Hey, y'all. And today we are going to talk about printing and technology and apps and all the fun things that we can use to create art and journal pages. And we want to give you some tips and some hacks and some of our fun finds in regards to that. But before we do, we have some happy mail to share with you. And Lori, I think you have some happy mail that you want to share. I do. This is from Kim. And she says, Y'all make me laugh out loud. I have really enjoyed meeting you all on your podcast. You inspire and encourage me. I don't seem to have any friends nearby into Bible or junk journaling. Thank you for being the funny rays of sunshine that you are. And I'm going to start saying y'all because I love hearing it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. That's so fun. Well, Kim, thank you. Yeah, Yeah, you're definitely uh, in our friend club. That's right. Thank you for calling us rays of sunshine. I don't know that our husbands would agree always. <laughs> and funny. She called us funny, you guys. That's awesome. Oh. So glad we amuse we other people. We thought we were just weird. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was such a sweet review that you left us. And if you would like us to share your thoughts during our Happy Mail segment, then just leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, or you can leave us a comment on the blog. And we would love to share that here on the podcast. So, okay, let's talk about technology and printing and inks and paper and all that good stuff. One of the questions that I get most asked on YouTube and on Instagram and and email, people are always asking me about how to print the printables, like what paper to use and what ink and Mm -hmm. printers. So we thought this would be a good topic to talk about. And so first I thought we could all share what printers we use. And I use an HP Workforce 30. Oh, shoot. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> that's all right. I'm looking at mine up real quick. And I'll put it in the show notes too, in case that's not the right number, but it's old. So the new version of it is, does not get good reviews, unfortunately. And I, that seems to happen with technology a lot. Like you buy something that you love. And then when you buy the new version of it, it's mm-hmm. not as good. Have y'all noticed that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Yep. So I'm clinging to this printer and hoping that it stays good <laughs> while I'm saving up for a, a more expensive version. But mm-hmm. the reason I like it is it uses, uh, it's an Epson printer. It uses DuraBright ink, which is a pigment-based ink. Most printers mm. use a dye-based ink. And because it's pigment-based, it is, I don't know if waterproof is the right word, but it's water resistant. So That's so cool. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can print printables. And then you can paint over them or you can put a gesso over them and it doesn't smear and run. So that is why I love it. And the one that I'm saving up for is the tank kind that has the refillable tanks. Yeah. Oh, the eco tank. Yeah, the eco I've tank. i good things about those. They have a DuraBright version of that, but it's like $1,000. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. That's going to take me a while to save up for probably, but that's what I'm hoping to save up for. So what about you guys? What is your, what printer do you use and what ink do you use? I use an HP Office Jet. Now, I'm not sure. I was going to give you a number, but I don't know that I know what my number is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we will put I, that in the show notes though. Yes, we will. I don't know that it's still available, but yeah, if it's not, I'll put the most recent one in there. Okay. But I and I love it. And I also use HP Ink, which is a subscription service for ink so that you basically never run out. The printer talks over the internet to the HP people, tells them <laughs> when it needs ink, and they put it in the mail and it's on my doorstep in a couple of days. It's crazy. I love it. Wow. Yeah, yes. It's really awesome. And you there's different tiers of subscription. So I think you can do 
like a hundred prints a month for X amount of dollars. I don't know what that is. Or the next step up would be 300 pages a month, which is what I do. And it's like maybe $12 a month. So wow, we used to do, I think it was 50 bucks for a pack of ink for our old printer. And we'd at least do it twice a year. So it was close to the same price, but this is more convenient. And I'm guessing we would replace it more than twice a year. So yeah, I love it. I, I think it's great. My husband does not like subscription services and he is all about this one. <laughs> so. My husband is like that about subscriptions too. It's, yep. That must yeah. be a husband thing. He's Maybe. like, no, no monthly fees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that HP Instant Ink is fantastic. I use it yeah. also. And I use the HP Envy Photo 6255. I've used HP printers for a long, long time. And I don't know what I do to them, but I have to change mine out every year or so. So I usually try and get one. Yeah, (laughs) that I'm not real. (laughs) I usually try and get one that's not super expensive. But this one I actually just got and I'm hoping that it lasts a while. It has the HP Instant Ink also. And I think if I'm not mistaken, there are three tiers in it. And you can go with the basic, the middle or the top. And it is such a fantastic service and they have great customer service also because Mm -hmm. again very difficult on my printers and (laughs) I've had to talk to them several times and they're always so wonderful to work with yeah and if you don't use all your pages in your subscription they roll over for the next month so yeah my goodness I'm definitely over 100 but I'm not to 300 so I have a whole bunch of rollover pages yeah but it it works great wow the rollovers that's a really good yeah feature it is yeah it's very cool Okay, so that's printers and inks. So let's talk about paper now. For me, I like to use premium presentation paper. It's double-sided, which means it's really important when you're doing Traveler's Notebook inserts and things where you're going to print on both sides. You want it to have the same coating on both sides. And it's a little heavier than office paper, but not as thick as cardstock. So for me, it's like Hmm. the perfect weight for Traveler's Notebook inserts. And really, I print almost everything on it. Unless I want something to be really sturdy, like maybe a cover of a mini book or something, then I'll use cardstock or I'll use double-sided matte photo paper because Mm -hmm. you get such pretty colors with Mm -hmm. that. And I will put my source links in there where I get my papers. But that's what I use mostly. And sometimes I'll print on just plain printer paper if I'm not trying to get the prettiest print. But What about you guys? What papers do you use? I have several different papers that I use for different things, but I use probably the most frequent is a cardstock that I get at Walmart, honestly. It's Walmart's pen and gear brand, premium cardstock, 110 pound, but it's index. So it's not the same as 110 pound that you might buy at Michael's. It's not quite that thick, but it's... okay just the right thickness, I think, for die cuts or covers for your TNs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I think it prints great quality. I've heard before that your the quality of your prints is not necessarily your printer, but more about the paper that you mm-hmm. use. Yeah. I have printed on this cardstock and a piece of like photo paper, and I don't see a whole lot of difference really that's present. So I just have continued using it and it's not expensive at all. It's like 150 sheets for six bucks. Wow. Yeah. And then for just regular pages in my traveler's notebook or junk journal or whatever, I use the HP premium 32 pound printer paper. It's real smooth. It looks great printed. It's nice to write on. It's a little thicker. I think standard copy paper is 20 pound and this is 32. So it's a little bit thicker. And actually Mm -hmm. we talked about it not too long ago because Jess, I think Mm -hmm. uses what, which one do you use? I use the premium 28 pound, 28 pound. Okay. So yeah, which I thought for sure yours would be less expensive, but it's not. Hmm. Isn't that funny? Yes. So anyway, expensive. I don't know. Not a lot, but yeah. So this okay. one, it's 500 sheets for 12 bucks on Amazon. And then the other thing I was going to tell you about, I don't, this I'm on the fence about because I like it, but then I kind of don't. And it's called Southworth White Linen 24 pound paper. Yeah. So what mm-hmm. I like about it is it's textured and it's really cool for printing like wallpaper prints, stuff like that, where you want that texture. And it, it mm-hmm. really does look like it adds a lot of texture to your digital wallpapers, which is nice. What I don't like about it is it's 24 pound. It's very, very thin. 
Yeah. So it's not much thicker than copy paper. So I don't love that. But it's yeah. if you're going to just tear it up and use it in pieces anyways, then it's perfectly good. So that's what I have for paper. Yeah, I bought some of that when we talked about our paper episode. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. I did too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and that's what I thought too. I love the texture, but it is really thin. But mm-hmm. I haven't tried this yet, but I think it would be really good for collage because it's so thin. So I need to try. Oh, yeah printing out some of the vintage wallpaper tags yes. and then yes. like tearing those up and using them for collage. I think that would work really well. I did That's print some idea. of the vintage wallpaper tags on it and it's gorgeous on that it is. linen yes. paper. Mm-hmm. I did too. That's the only thing I've used it on. And I use, again, we just talked about the HP premium 28 pound paper, but I also, I love the heavyweight cardstock from Hobby Lobby for journaling cards and ephemera oh, yeah mm-hmm. it's really thick mm-hmm. and i just like the dimension and the thickness that it brings when i'm using it in my journal mm-hmm. or like when i do orders and i'm sending out a bible cover i always send out a card with one of my girls on it a journaling mm-hmm. card and that's the paper that i print it on i just like the heavy weight thickness of it yeah yeah do you know what Pound it is. I don't even know what. No, to say that. and it doesn't have it on the package, but it's yeah. heavier than any cardstock I have found anywhere else. I wonder because I think even at Michaels you can get like eighty pound and a hundred and ten pound. Now the hundred and ten pound is very thick. I can't get it to go through my printer. This goes through the printer seamlessly, no problems. Yeah, it's nice paper. So I don't, I I actually looked one time and never could find anywhere it was listed. Now I haven't looked on their website, but I've always liked the weight of it. So I never really cared, you know, I guess anything else about it. But anyway, heavyweight cardstock is what I use from there. And of course it goes on sale half price every other week. So that helps also. Oh yeah, that's nice. So we'll put the links to all of these two in the show notes. So let's talk about printing tips, like any hacks or tips that we have. Well, I only have one. (laughs) (laughs) Lori, what's yours? So I don't know if it's really a tip because I feel like everybody already knows this. But honestly, I didn't know it until someone made a point of it. Make sure you're printing, especially when you buy like pink paper peppermint printables. You want to be on your highest quality setting. Don't just print on standard because, you know, the, the ink... I guess it maybe lets out more ink when you print on higher quality. I don't know what it is, but it looks so much better. So if if you're not getting the quality that you want to be getting, check your printer settings. It also makes a difference. I've noticed if I do something and forget to check my settings, sometimes Mm -hmm. it'll print with lines in it or Mm -hmm. dots. And that is almost always because I forgot to do best quality or the, Mm -hmm. the highest DPI on there. Yeah. Yeah. And it will also change the color if you print in standard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll print something that's supposed to be turquoise and it will, it will come out more green or more blue. And it's because you're not on the highest setting. So it's not pushing out as much ink. And so you're going to get a different color. And I've had people tell me that before, you know, it's printing the wrong colors. And that's, that's usually why it's because they're printing on draft or standard mode. Hmm. So you are using more ink when you print on high, but you'll love the quality so much more. And if you use the HP ink, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. (laughs) It comes like magic in the mail. Yeah, It does. And it's still going to, you know, you're doing the 100, 200, 300 sheets, however many you choose. Even if you do all 100 at best quality, it's going to be the same. Yep. Doesn't matter. So, okay. Well, I love that. That's a good one. And Jess, what about you? Tips. Okay. So mine's more of a trick. Because you can print on fabric. If you get Mm -hmm. a, like a muslin or a heavyweight cotton, just solid. I like to Mm -hmm. get like a solid white or cream and I cut it the size of my eight by 11 paper or whatever the size of just a normal sheet of paper is. And I'll like tape it, use masking tape and wrap it around the sides so that it's, down really well to the paper. Sometimes I've even sprayed the back with spray glue and stuck it to the paper and run it through my printer. Then I can print ephemera or anything, journaling Mm. covers, whatever on that fabric. Hmm. Wow. I've never heard of using the masking tape. That's a good idea. That is a great idea. I mean, it's probably cheaper than buying printable. Yeah, it is. And it keeps those rollers from 
rolling the fabric up or just skipping or whatever because it just mm-hmm. rolls with the sheet of paper in there. Hmm. That's really that's good. Idea. You can also do tissue paper the same way. <gasps> oh, and that's really cool. Oh, I want to try that. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 me too. I have use the freezer paper method where you buy freezer paper and you iron the fabric onto the freezer paper. Yeah. And it like sticks to it and then it makes it stiff enough to run through your printer. And that has worked pretty well for me, but I like the masking tape. Anything that where I don't have to get the iron out is right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but I have, I just bought a whole bunch of freezer paper and I thought, I don't remember why I bought this. It's for something, but you did it for the alcohol ink that we got. I did, but I I knew there was something else that you could use it for. And for the life of me, I could not remember. I'm pretty sure that was it, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah, fabric. And another thing you can do if you iron the fabric onto the freezer paper is then you can die cut it. Oh. And then the fabric just peels right off the freezer <gasps> paper and it's now it's cut in the shape that you cut oh, it in. Oh, how that's awesome. cool. So, that's yeah. really cool. So that's a really fun one. And then after the show, y'all are going to have to tell me about the alcohol inks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about that, but that's not what we're talking about today. But I'm like, what? Alcohol inks? What? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so my tip, I call this overprinting or double printing. And basically what it is, is you run something through the printer and then you use that same sheet and run it through again and print something else on top of it. And so you have to experiment a little bit to figure out the best way to do it. But like, for instance, the giant journaling tags that are just manila tags. Yes. So you print those out and then you put them back in the printer and then you can print a pattern paper on them. or <gasps> so cool. a- a graph oh. paper or flowers or something. Another fun thing to do is to print like a ledger paper. You know, I have ledger paper in almost all my paper kits, different yeah. kinds of ledger paper. Maybe <laughs> kind of go bitter pat. <laughs> I know you love that. I do. So you can print ledger paper out first and then put it back in the printer and then print one of the painted papers on top of that. And then it's like you're building layers, you know, creating these layers like you collaged oh. it, but you didn't. Yeah. You didn't have to do that. So that's a, great that's a really idea. fun one to play with. One that I did accidentally one time was, you know, the giant butterfly page wraps. Yes. Uh-huh. I printed that and then I accidentally, I don't even know how I did it, but I accidentally printed one of the painted Traveler's Notebook insert mm-hmm. pages on top of the butterfly and it came out so cool. It was like oh. a ledgery pattern over the painted butterfly and then I cut it out and I oh, loved how cool. it looked. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's all kinds of stuff to try then. Yeah. So Ooh, that's exciting. Fun. I accidentally <laughs> did that also one time with your butterflies, with just the, the collection of butterflies that you have. Mm-hmm. I printed like a pink graph paper under the butterflies. Mm. Had no clue I was doing it, but I loved how they turned out like that. Yeah. That's so cool. Happy accidents are the best, are they yes. not? Yeah. <laughs> Happy little trees. Awesome. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Another one that I thought of, which I have a video on this, I will link it in the show notes, is shrinking and enlarging things. Yes. Enlarging things doesn't work quite as well because you start to lose quality as soon as you make something bigger than it's meant to be printed. But mm-hmm. but shrinking is really fun. So mm-hmm. you can shrink like the Traveler's Notebook inserts, you can shrink them like put it at 50% and then you basically have like a little mini book and then you can shrink the stickers or the ephemera, just tell it to print at 50% and you'll get little tiny pieces that can go in your mini book. So that's a really fun one. Oh yeah. Yes. Agreed. To stretch your, your supplies, you can do different things with it than you might've thought of. Mm-hmm. I've done that. I love printing the ephemera small, especially yeah. if I'm working in a smaller journal. Now I will tell you though, I, you know, y'all know I like me some fussy cutting, but little bitty stuff, fussy cutting, not nearly as much fun. Yeah, <laughs> no. it, you were it is harder, definitely harder to cut out, but it is really cute. Yes, it, is. It, is. it is. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about organizing files. I think we, we're all going to share how we organize our files. And we, we talked a little bit about it before the show and decided that none of our ideas are revolutionary. (laughs) But basically what I do is I name the folders by the designer. I have one folder that's basically digital designs. And then under that I have alphabetically by designer. So 
We might use Creative Faith Co. You might use some of her printables. So she would have her own folder. Pink Paper Peppermints would have their own folder like that. And the reason I do it by designer is designers move around. They go to different shops. It's just hard to track. If you name it just by the kit, I just find it easier to remember who made that Mm -hmm. kit. You know, I know that I got that kit from whatever the shop is. And then if that person moves to a different shop or whatever, I can still find their stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it easier. And it's also easier when you want to give someone credit for whose product it is. You don't wonder. It's not just by the name of the kit. It's by the designer. And then within those designer folders, then I do it by kit. And then inside the kit folders, I do it by product. And that's why I try to organize my products like that for my customers, that they're organized by kit. And then inside the kit folder, there's folders with each of the parts Mm -hmm. of the kit. Mm -hmm. So that helps me find things. I used to use Picasa and then Google changed to Google photos. And I decided I didn't like that. Mm So, so I'm kind of in between. I don't have a really good visual. I have Lightroom, but I haven't learned how to use it yet. So sadly, I can't give you any tips for that. Oh boy. But tagging is the best. If you can tag your stuff, Then when you're looking for a pink graph paper, you can just put in the search pink graph paper and everything, every kit that has pink graph paper in it. If the designer put that in or if you tagged it, it will come up. Now, I try to put that in names of my products so that you don't have to tag it. Mm -hmm. I try to put graph paper pink or whatever to give it some kind of tag for you. But if you can also tag it yourself, if you have a program like Lightroom or one of those. Okay. So that's how I organize files. What about you, Jess? I use a thumb drive and I put it in file folders on the thumb drive, usually by the website that I get them from. So kind of like by designer. Yes. By the company Mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you use a thumb drive? To save room on my computer. Okay. I like it. It keeps it from being too bogged down with files. Hmm. It's a good idea. Good idea. And then I do a really big pom-pom on the end of my thumb drive so I don't lose it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that would be, that could get lost pretty easily. Yes, it can. I've done it before, (laughs) multiple times. What about you, Lori? I basically do the same thing that you do. The only, maybe the only thing different. I have a file on my desktop called Silhouette because when I started doing digital files, it was all for making things on my silhouette. And so Mm. I called it silhouette. And then inside that file folder, I would put exactly like you, the artist, designer, company that I got it from. And then within there, the collection. And then within there, the type of product, like you said, Melissa, like all the tags together or whatever. So very similar to, to what you're doing. Which I think that is really helpful, especially if you're on creative teams or you want to be on creative teams Mm -hmm. because obviously you need to know who made the thing that you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, okay. So for supplies, we thought we would tell you about some apps that we use that we like. Jess, you want to go first? Sure. And my my app that I use is actually my fun find also. So we're going to do two in one there. But my my favorite um, app to use is color story when I'm editing pictures or trying to create something a little different then I will use color story there's a free version and then there's a paid version and I ended up opting for the paid version because of all the filters and design elements you can get with it Mm -hmm. and one thing I love about color story is you can edit multiple pictures at one time so if I've taken five pictures of a page and done close-ups and back and side, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. all the angles, I can edit them all at the same time. So I'm not trying to adjust the brightness individually on each one to look the exact same. Like they can all be edited together. That's very nice. Yeah. I, I use color story to the pay version and I know that you can save your steps. So like you save all the filters. Is that what you mean by editing them all at the same time? Or is there some, No, it's called a batch edit. So when you go in to pick your pictures where you hit the little plus button at the bottom, Mm -hmm. at the top right, it says batch edit. And you click that and then you can select multiple pictures to edit at the same time. Oh my gosh, how did I not know that? Wonderful. 
I'm so excited right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I'm going to have to buy, <laughs> to buy this app, you guys. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I absolutely love Color Story for their filters yeah. and everything. What I've done is once I do the first picture, I save my steps and then I go back in and pull in the next picture and just use the saved yeah. thing that I did. But I didn't know you could just batch edit. I'm yes. so excited to try that now. Batch oh. edit's my favorite. It's a great app for editing. I pretty much use that exclusively to edit my pictures for Instagram and for the blog and everything. Yes. So Lori, what about you? What app? Is your well, app? I'm real simple with our with our photo editing, just so y'all know. So I don't get fancy <laughs> like y'all. I have a very, very simple app. At least it could be far more powerful than I know, but all I do are like three little things, but it's called Pick Tap Go. Pick is P-I-C, tap, okay. T-A-P, and go. It's just a real simple photo editing. You can edit the contrast, the color, the light, and the warmth. And Recently, I've been playing with those, and I think it's made a big difference in my photos, but I think I need to learn how to use Color Story because that sounds even better. Color Story is pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It has got a lot of features. It can be overwhelming at first, mm -hmm. but once you kind of learn where everything – clearly, I don't even know where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> but the filters, I love the filters, and I love the effects. Too. Yes. I use the effects a lot. That They have like – little sparkly things and dust and different things that you can add to and light your leaks. Yes. Yeah. Light leaks and things that you can just, Oh my gosh, you guys are going to have to teach me this because honestly, that's probably why I haven't used, I mean, I have it color story. I have not used it because it's very overwhelming to me. Yeah. I don't know anything about picture editing as far as, you know, I just kind of mess around with it till it looks good. I don't really know yeah. why or what I'm doing. So maybe yeah. I can give me a little lesson on that. Yeah. Yeah. We should do that. We should do a video maybe, Jess. Oh, yeah. We could do like a a double video. You could do some features and then I'll do the other features. Yeah. That'd, be That'd be awesome. Fun. And I'll be the dope who watches it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you're like Lori and you feel really overwhelmed <laughs> by apps and you you would like a video about Color Story or if you have a great app that you use for photos and you want to share with us, let us know mm -hmm. in the comments. Yeah. So the other supply that we were going to talk a little bit about is mini printers for printing photos, or actually you can print printables on mini printers too. Hmm. And basically mini printers print, the, there's little ones that print sticker size, like the HP Sprocket, which mm -hmm. I think Jess and I both have that. Lori, do you have that too? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes like little I don't know actually what the size is it two by three mm -hmm. I yeah. believe so yeah and it makes little two by three kind of sticker prints and it's really fun for journaling to print out you can print right from your phone it's got an app and you can print little pictures that I like it especially when you're on a trip not that I've been on a trip in a really long time but <laughs> as all of us probably but when you're on a like a weekend trip it's fun to be able to print something from that day yes. and stick it in your journal. And then what else? What other printers were we going to talk about? Well, we just found the Canon selfie. Oh, the square. The square, yes. The square, yeah, but it's a selfie square. Yeah, yes. the selfie square. I have the Canon selfie that prints four by six photos. And I really like that when I'm, especially when I'm doing scrapbooking type journaling where I'm printing out full size pictures. But also you can print printables on that. Now you have to know a little bit about pulling in your printables and making them four by six size. But sometimes I send my newsletter subscribers four by six size printables. Mm -hmm. So it's the same size as a picture and you can print those on that Canon selfie. But then Jess, you're talking about the new one that we just found that we're pretty sure we're all going to yeah. buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm holding out for now. We'll Until see. Until we get it and then she's going to order it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's probably true. Lori was chastising us before the show. She's like, you guys, you know, I need another printer. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of that conversation, I was like, okay, I'll probably get one too. <laughs> but I just sent back two printers that I've decided I didn't need. And so I'm going to, my yeah. husband might have my head on a platter if I buy another printer. He'll just roll his eyes and I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> Well, let's tell them about what we found. It's called the Canon Selfie Square. Yes. UX10. Is that how you say it? That sounds per uh, perfect. I can't even talk. 
Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. And it prints. These pictures are square and they look like Polaroids. So you put in, I'm assuming it has an app. We didn't completely do our research. I did see the ad that there was an app for it. So you can pull in a picture from your phone and it prints it out and it looks like a Polaroid, which yes. I think is really cool. And it comes in pink and it's very cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it prints with ink instead of the thermal printing that the mm-hmm. sprocket does. Yes. So we were thinking that means the pictures are going to be a lot better quality yes. than mm-hmm. the sprocket. They're mm-hmm. not going to be kind of as blurry. I don't know if blurry is the right. Higher quality. There's something about the sprocket though. Yeah. Yeah. It's just lower quality, but it's mm-hmm. fun. It's yes. just not the best quality pictures. But these look in the ad, these look pretty nice. Mm-hmm. So I think I really want to get one. <laughs> but we'll oh, see. Gosh. Y'all, I'm going to give in. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, but I'm going to get one too. Don't do it. <laughs> Only if y'all do it one. though. If y'all don't do it, I won't do it either. <laughs> So now we're responsible. Yes. Lori's husband rolling his eyes at her. That's called blame shifting. My husband listens to our podcast too. I'm sure he'll have some choice words for me about that not being true. Uh, Y'all, I'm so glad my husband does not listen to our podcast. No kidding. Hey, one of my sons listens occasionally. He's 18 and he's listened to a couple of them. I think that he's is sweet. so cute. He tells me yeah. it's great. He loves it. That's so sweet. <laughs> I told my son that. My son's 18 too. And I, I said, Lori's son listens to our podcast. And he just looked at me like, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, okay, Lori, you want to do your fun find? Yes, I do. So my fun find is a website. It's called redbubble.com. And I had only heard of this because my son uses it. You can buy stickers. You can buy a lot of things that different designers load onto Redbubble. And then you order, like I, my son ordered me some Golden Girls stickers to put on my computer, which I love. <laughs> I'm all about the Golden Girls. My friend Marlo and I, we're going to be the Golden Girls someday. We've decided. <laughs> <laughs> and they're great quality stickers, like really thick, nice vinyl. But I think you can get all kinds of things printed from different designers who upload mm-hmm. their work on this website. And I hadn't heard of it until my son started buying from them. So I thought that was a really cool website. Yeah, I actually, this is something that I haven't really announced yet, but I actually have uploaded some of my designs to Redbubble. Some of my artwork, on I put them on zipper pouches. So oh, fun. I will try and get my act together and put a link to that in the show notes. (laughs) The reason I haven't said anything is because I just haven't had time to do the promotion for it and to do all the things that go with telling people that you have that. But since it was your fun find, I thought, well, this will give me the opportunity. We record these a little bit ahead. So Mm -hmm. I've got some time before y'all hear this Mm -hmm. to get my act together. (laughs) You can do it. You can do it. And then I'll put maybe some of the printables in there. I've just got one in there right now as vinyl stickers, too, maybe. Oh, that'd be oh, fun. fun. Yeah. Then maybe even a pink paper peppermint you can <gasps> put on your That would be so cute. Be mm-hmm. I yes. Like <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of that before, but. That's a great idea. I would put a pink paper peppermint on my laptop. Oh. Oh. Totally. <laughs> I love that. (laughs) So Jess, you kind of already told us your fun find, right? Yes. Color story. Color story. Mm -hmm. So mine is not anything to do with printing. (laughs) Mine is, and I've told people about this before. So if this is not new to you, I'm sorry, but I really wanted to talk about it because they started the new season, but it is the chosen TV series. Mm -hmm. It's actually a streaming series. It's not on TV. You know what? It is actually. It is? I have seen it, but I can't remember what channel it was. But I was looking at for something one day and it just popped up in my on my feed of channels on like really? Dish Network. Yes. So I started wow. recording them because we have terrible internet at our house, so it's very hard oh. to stream. And I thought, well, I'll just start recording them and watch them that way. Isn't that crazy? So have you watched it yet? Do you no. like it? No, that's not true. I have watched, I think I watched the first three streaming quite a while Mm -hmm. ago and I really enjoyed them, but I was doing something else while I'm watching them. And that's usually not the best way to really get into a show for me. Yeah. I I have to really watch it. Well, and there's a lot of subtle things you miss, I think, if you're Mm -hmm. not watching it. Yeah, but it is excellent. Jess, what about you? Have you watched it? I have not seen it yet, actually. So that sounds like something I need to watch. 
It is so, so good. It's the life of Jesus, but it's from yeah. the perspective of the disciples. And it's done kind of in a, almost a, a lost for, did y'all ever watch Lost? Yes. Yes. Loved so it's it. kind of, it's kind of done in a lost style combined with like, did you ever watch Once Upon a Time? Yes. No. I, Once Upon a Time was kind of like Lost too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of done like that. It's a very cool style. And the way that they portray the, the disciples and the characters are, they're just like real people. And a lot of times I think that we imagine the disciples as people with like saints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a little bit under where Jesus was. And really, if you read the stories, they were regular people with a lot of problems. You know, I mean, yeah. you think yeah. about Peter, he basically denied knowing Jesus and cussed at somebody. You know? Oh, gosh. That's what the Bible says. With cussing, he said, I don't know who you're talking about mm -hmm. when they said, don't you hang around with Jesus? You don't really think about them like that. But the show really dramatizes that and helps you see them as regular people and really relate. And mm -hmm. the thing that I love about it is it's very true to scripture, although they do put things in modern language. I think one of the problems with a lot of biblical dramas is they try to just keep the King James version. Oh yeah, that's yeah. So and, and you can't really do a drama where all you say is the exact words in the King James. I mean, it just right. doesn't translate. And this isn't like that. They they got a lot of people to help them, pastors and reverends and, you know, everybody from all different denominations to help them to make sure that they stayed true to the Bible. But it's very dramatized. And the thing that I like about it, I think I started saying this and didn't finish, is I watch it and then immediately when it's over, I want to go get in the Word and read about the story that I just oh, watched. That's cool. Oh, yeah, that is cool. That's never happened to me with any other biblical drama. Yeah. This one just, it, it m immediately makes you want to go read about that in the Bible. And it's so fun because a lot of times I'm like, did that happen? And, and I know the scripture, but yet because of the way they do it, it's so different than the way that I have personally visualized it yeah. yes. happening that I don't even recognize it. So then I go read the story and I'm like, wow, Jesus really did say that. And she really said that back. And I don't know. I just love that about it. And I love that what I feel like it helps me do is, is fix my eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so many sermons... If you, you ever listen to a sermon and the pastor is saying, you need to be doing this and you should be doing that and you shouldn't be doing this. And you're thinking, I know, but how? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do I do that? Because I'm not good at that. And I, I mess up in that area a lot and I don't know how. And I feel like that the key to that is fixing our eyes on Jesus. And yeah. I, I think I've said this before, but I feel like a lot of times we tend to fix our eyes on ourselves. Oh, I need yeah. to be better. Yeah. I'm not good at that. I wish I was better at that. Yeah. But if you fix your eyes on Jesus, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the beginning of it. He's the end of it. It's him. And we're we're just in him. And so if we're looking at ourselves, we're not seeing what we need to see. We need to see him. Yeah. The more that I do that with things, the more that I look at him, and see myself in him, the more that I see myself being able to not do the things that I was worried about doing before. Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yep. I don't, I'm not struggling as much with things that I used to struggle with because I'm not fixated on myself and me doing it in my own strength. I'm just looking at him. And so that's kind of a long way of, of, of a fun find, but that show helps me with that because yeah. it helps me see him in a different way. And it makes me want to get in the word and, and learn more about that part of him. Yeah. And I just love that. Well, and I think it's got to be helpful too. I struggle with, I'm really not a history buff. I don't love period pieces, I guess, like yeah. movies. They don't draw me at all, yeah. but there is something about this show that does make you think it, it, I think it gives us a different perspective that we don't, things were very different then. And I don't always understand that. So it helps me to see it. You know what I mean? To yeah. And not just think, okay, I know things were different, but I don't really have a grasp on it. So it does help to see it differently. Yeah, definitely. 
So that's my fun find. So I highly recommend it and have a box of tissue because I seem to cry oh, hysterically no. at oh, the end no. of every episode. Not in a bad way, not like in a sad way, just in a very touched, you know, it just touches your heart. And mm-hmm. especially the first episode is the most, the one that I cry at the most, but really every single one of them are just so amazing. Wow. And they just really do such a good job of getting you at the end, you know, of leading up to this moment at the end where you're just like a big blathering mess of <laughs> I, I, I don't i don't i don't watch shows that make me cry <laughs> but this is a good cry this is not oh. a, I, a melancholy cry this is a god is so good cry okay. like, mm-hmm. you know the kind of cry where in church where when they tell a testimony of something that god did and you just just love him so much because he's so yeah. good it's that it's just amazing okay i'll try it so if you haven't watched it yet there's a couple ways that you can watch it apparently you can find it on tv which i didn't know but you can also, there's an app called the chosen app. It's free. You download it to your phone and you can watch it right in the app, or they have this little button that you click that will cast it to your TV. That's cool. So that is yeah, cool. it's really cool. Now I don't know how it works with all the different services. We have a Roku. So when I hit the button, it popped up and it, has you downloaded the specific Roku channel that goes with the app. Mm -hmm. And then you just hit play and it starts playing on your TV. If Hmm. you don't have a Roku, I think it, it works with a lot of different services. So, but, but you can always just watch it in the app too, like on your phone or on your iPad or whatever. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. You have to, I can't believe you haven't watched it. I I don't, I'm not a big TV watcher. Yeah, that that's true. I'm really not either, but That is one that's definitely worth your time. So, okay, let's talk about our challenge for this week. We thought it would be fun since we talked about printing and technology to challenge you to pick one of the, either one of the techniques that we mentioned, like uh, double printing or shrinking things, or I already forgot everyone's tips. (laughs) Oh yeah. Printing on different mediums. Printing on different mediums, right? Fabric printing Mm -hmm. or printing at your highest setting, like Mm -hmm. Lori suggested. Or you could try one of the apps. Oh, I forgot to tell you my app. (laughs) Oh. Didn't I? I did. What is your app? My app is called Retouch. Nope. You didn't tell us about it. (laughs) It is so cool. (laughs) So if you have a picture that has like a wire in the background or... Maybe you take a picture in your house and the plug cover is like huge and it just totally takes away from the picture that you took. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Retouch, you pull the picture in and you literally take your finger and rub it over the plug and it disappears. Oh, Oh, I have seen ads for that. And I think it's like, it might be like $6.99, I think. It's the best money I've ever spent on an app. I actually learned about it from Elsie Larson, who does the Color Story app. That's her app. Okay. I actually learned about retouch from her. So hmm. yeah, it is amazing. So it's so much fun to, I literally, one picture I have is a picture of my husband and I on the beach and there's a beach house behind us mm-hmm. that's kind of blocking the view of the ocean, just a little bit on the side. Mm-hmm. And I literally wiped that beach house out and it filled it in with the ocean and sand. Oh that's my goodness. That's really cool. Yeah, I it know. is. It, It's, it's amazing. So if you like to take pictures and especially like when I take pictures of things, I don't even worry anymore if the table has junk on it or like my clips, my binder clips that I use to hold open my journal. Mm -hmm. I I just take those out with that (gasps) retouch app. No way. Oh my goodness. Yes. 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 That's awesome. So cool. Wow. So I will link that in the files and now we'll get back to the challenge. So you can use the retouch app or (laughs) color story or one of the apps that we talked about. Or one of the techniques. And our word for this week is hope. So mix your word in any way you want to. You can do it literally. You can type it out. You can just use that to inspire your page. And mix that with a printing technique. And that will be your challenge. Make sure that you use the hashtag creative faith and friends. If you post your picture on Instagram. Because we are giving prizes to random people that we find using our hashtag. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Before we go, I want to let you know where you can find everyone online. Lori, where can we find you online? 
You can find me either on YouTube or Instagram at measure once, cut twice with periods in between the words. And Jess, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Just Give Me Jesus and on Etsy at Choose Joy in Jesus. And you can find me at pinkpaperpeppermints.com. And I'm Pink Paper Peppermints on YouTube and Instagram as well. And I would love to see you there. Thank you all so much for listening this week. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed the conversation this week. Do you have any questions about printing that we didn't answer? Just feel free to leave us your questions on the blog at pinkpaperpeppermints.com slash zero one zero. And you'll also find all the links that we talked about in today's show there in the show notes. And if you have a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts so that other creative friends can find us, we would be so thankful for that. I'm Melissa Olson, and I hope you have a week filled with peace and grace, and we will see you next time on Creative Faith and Friends.